Hello everyone, this is Mike, and today I'm going to show you how to make this JavaScript calculator that will pass the tests for Free Code Camp. As you can see, it's passing all the tests. We'll run it again, and it is passing them. So, what was interesting about this calculator, I have actually tried a lot of different versions, as you can see here, and they were pretty good calculators, and there's a lot of different ways of making it. But the specific thing about this calculator, this one, is that um, it needs to show like a string of operations up here. So if you type like 9 times 8 divided by 7 minus 2, it shows every single operator and number that you've put up here in the display and then you equals it and it works. Whereas like a normal calculator, where this one I followed a tutorial on Medium, it works more like a regular calculator where it won't show you every single operator. So 6 times 9 equals 54. Then you press the minus key and it knows that it's minus inside, but it doesn't show you it, and so on and so forth. And you can keep going like that. So that doesn't work for this. It will fail a lot of the tests because it's looking for that string of numbers and operators. So we're going to use this one instead. And we're going to be using React to make this. And if you have done the React tutorials on Free Code Camp, that would be pretty good to start you off to understand how it's all working. And it's basically going to be this code right here. And we'll go through it all together. We've got an application with a state that's holding the current number displayed and to things that we'll get into later. This is the operator flag and the decimal flag, which will tell you if an operator has been pressed. So if we have pressed plus, it will add plus to it, but if then it will turn the flag to be true. And if the flag is true, it won't add another operator here. But you can change the operator. And then if you hit a number, the flag will become false again. So you can actually add another operator after that. And that's how you can get this string of operators and numbers without having duplicate operators in there. A similar idea with the decimal flag. If you wanted to put 0.3 in here, you can't put another decimal until you press an operator and then you can put 0.2 and boom, there you go. All right, so that's for the state. Then it's going to have this function called handle click, which will take care of every single thing that the buttons do. So if it's a number button, it'll put the button up there under certain conditions. And if it's a decimal, if it's the clear button, if it's so on and so forth, different buttons. And down here, we'll actually be rendering the button components and the screen. So we have a screen called display and buttons with all the names. And these are actually required to pass the tests you can see here, um, clickable elements with the IDs 0, 1, 2, etc. So it goes on like that. And here are the components that we're rendering. This is the screen one. All it does is have the number from the state inside it, and it renders that. And this is a button. The button has uh, a clickable event so when you click it it's going to run the this function called run parent handle click which is right here and all that does is runs a function that is passed to it and that function is actually this handle click which is in the application which is the parent component which is calling or rendering the buttons all right, at the bottom, it just renders the entire application onto the HTML right here. So it's using, it's targeting this div with the ID app and rendering the application component into that div. All right, so we're going to go over here and this is a little template I set up and you can get it. I'll put a link below. Um, basically all it does is sets up your application component with state 
it has the render method returning uh, container div so we'll put all the components in here and then at the bottom it's just rendering whatever we put there into the HTML just like before and there's no CSS yet but we will add it in so let's get started alright so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna make another class um, that's gonna or a component it's gonna be the screen so let's type that out class screen extends react component cool it's not going to need a constructor, it's just going to need a render, oops, render method that returns uh, a div. And the div has to have an ID of display, I believe. Uh, it's either display or screen, but we can change it later if we need to. Gotta remember to close that div tag, and inside here it's going to have uh, a property that's passed to it, and that property is going to be the current number. So we enclose it in the curly braces and type this dot props dot current number. Okay, what's going on? Oh right put that in there. Okay, cool. So we actually haven't sent the number as a property yet to this, but we can do that up here. So here we'll put screen component, close the tag, and make it a self-closing tag, and we will give it the property right in here. Oops and that's going to be current number equals and we're going to get it from the state so this dot state dot current number cool and that gets enclosed in curly braces but we haven't got anything in state yet so we'll come up here into the state and we'll make something called current number and we'll just initialize it to zero so that um, that we'll start at zero just like a calculator does. Now I have an error. Okay you don't put equals right you put colon instead for for this. So now we're actually getting our zero up here behind the little test icon. You can see that. Pretty cool. Now we're going to need to make the buttons. So we'll come down here and we're going to make another component. So class button extends react component curly brace open, close, and we will not need state for the button either, but we're just going to give it a render method that returns a button. I think actually you have to close it in divs. Maybe you don't have to. I th let's see. Yeah, it's fine to do this, I believe. And this button is going to have a name property that will be sent to it from the parent class. This.props.name, just how we got the current number property sent to the screen over there. And, oh, right, actually, we will put this over here instead so it'll actually show up as some text and then the other property we're going to need is the handle click 
so handle or sorry on click equals this dot props dot handle click or wait no it's not gonna be that let me look over here right it's gonna actually just run a function that will put inside the button so this dot run parent handle click so it, when it gets clicked it's gonna run this function which will be whatever function we send to it and we're gonna put that function up here so run parent handle click equals a function oopsies here we go that will return this dot props I believe that's right so let's double check okay right and that function is going to need a name so when it's clicked it will run whatever function we send to it based on what name the button has it will do something and we don't need these curly braces they're extra cool so now we're going to go back up to our application and right under our screen we're going to make some buttons and we're going to be passing them a name and a handle click and handle click will be this dot handle click this referring to this applications handle click which we're going to be putting right here in just a little bit then we'll close up that button and let's make this button be zero button for now or actually let's just make all the buttons right now so copy that and that will be button zero one two three four five six seven eight nine clear equals decimal plus minus divide subtract and we'll go through and name them all so zero one one two three four five six seven eight nine clear equals what else decimal divide or let's actually do plus first plus minus multiply divide and these are all going to need IDs so I'm just going to add that real quick okay so I've done that I've added the IDs here with all the right names Nope. and one thing I had to change was the button was capital if it's capital down here that doesn't exist that's not a thing um, so make it a lowercase v and we get these buttons up here with all the different names um, I was getting confused because the class button has a capital B so you do have to make it a capital B up here in the render method of the application great so we've got all of our buttons and our screen and now we have to make them actually do things but before we do that I'm actually going to want to lay it out in a grid so we're going to come up here and wrap oh wait actually yeah we're going to wrap the screen and the buttons in a div with an ID called grid container come down here close up that div 
And now we are going to need to actually put some CSS on here to make it a grid. And what I'm going to do is, since CSS is not really the focus of this, I'm actually just going to copy the CSS from this right here, but I will kind of explain it real quick. So the grid, I guess that I called it calc grid. We'll change that real quick. So it will work. So the grid is, it's got a height, it's got a width, it's displaying grid, it has a certain number of rows and columns. The buttons are set to be the height that fills it up. The display has uh, some flex display and it's justifying the content to the flex end so that's why this is showing up on this side rather than on this side which it def would default to and the items are aligned in the center so when you put in the numbers they appear on this side so that's important then every single button is just getting a position on the grid so you can go through and either make it how you like or you can just copy this I'll put a link to this one below and hopefully that will sort of make it's not quite the same as it used to be I wonder why okay it has to do with the IDs so the screen ID being display here is not enough. What it needs is down here in the component, we need to make the ID the property of the ID being passed to it. So as you can see, if I take this out, it's not targeting it correctly. So we need ID to be this.props.id, and that's also going to be the case for all these buttons, which is why they're not appropriately lined up. Here we go. So ID equals the stop props to ID. Also the class name needs to be button because in our CSS we're targeting it. And you can also make them different colors if you want, but I'm not gonna do that at this time. Great, so we have our grid good to go. Now we're gonna have to start making the buttons do things. So to do that we'll use our handle click so we'll type it up here uh, before the render method. Handle click equals a function that takes a name property. Um, yep, or button name, we can call it. And we'll return something, or we'll do actually do something and it's going to be dependent on what the button name is. Now remember we're getting this button name from all the way down here on the button component so on click it will run this function inside the button component and that runs the handle click which we're about to write using the name that has been sent to this button as a property from this. So if its name is zero, it'll do something and so forth, and that's where it's all coming from. So we're going to do a switch case up here. It's going to be true until we break, and we'll have all different types of cases. So first case will be if it is a number. So case button name equals 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 um, zero so or any of the other numbers so we're gonna have to write that out so or put the two bars and we're gonna copy and paste it for every single number okay so for any of these number buttons. We'll put the colon there to say that's the end of the 
conditions, we are going to update this current number in our state. So um, we'll make a variable. Maybe, a, yeah, we have to let, because we're going to change it. So let current number equal this dot state dot current number, which is referring to this. So now it'll equal zero for starters. Then we're going to append the button name to that string. So current number plus equals the button name. Then we're going to have to change the state. So this dot set state, open parentheses, open curly braces, current number. And since current number is the same, the name of the variable is the same as the name of the property of state. We don't have to write anything like current number colon current number. It's sufficient to just say that and it will know what we mean. Okay, let's try it out. Great, we can press buttons and numbers will appear and that is awesome. But there's one thing that we need to think about, which is the zero here at the beginning. If it's a zero to start off with, we want the first number we press to actually replace the zero first. So let's make an if statement and wrap our bit of code in that if statement. And we're going to say if this dot state dot current number equals 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 zero, or well, not equals 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 zero, then we will append that. So right now it's not going to do anything. Else, current number is going to become the number instead of appending equals button name. And we are going to take this here so we don't have to write it twice for each one. We'll, we will put it at the bottom here. Okay, and let's see. Great, so we pressed a number, it replaced because the current number equaled zero. And now it doesn't equal zero, so hopefully it should add. No, it doesn't. I wonder why this is. It's because I wrote this wrong. I think the exclamation point has to be here. So if it not equals equals zero. Let's try. No. All right. Try something else. It's because the current number was a local variable to this if statement. So what I've done is taken the declaration of this variable and put it at the top of the handle click function. It w uh, the else condition wasn't having access to that variable. Save it and now it replaces zeros and adds more numbers subsequently. That's pretty cool. Let's tab this over so it looks a little better. Alright, now we have numbers being added, but we also want to be able to do things with them, like divide them and such. 
So we're going to have another case, but before we have this case, we will need to put a break. So now this case will be all on its own, and it won't continue doing things unexpectedly. So we'll have a new case, and the case is for operators. So button name strictly equal to plus, or to subtract, or to the other ones. Delete that last or, put in the divide, the multiply, and the minus. Okay, so if this is the case, put the colon there, and actually I'll put it there to be consistent with the last one we made. Then we're going to want to append it onto our string of numbers here on the screen but only if there's not already a an operator there. So to make sure that there's not an operator, we're going to make the operator flag up here in the state. That's going to keep track of if the last button pressed was an operator. So operator flag false to start off with. So we're going to check if that's true, or if it's false. So if not operator flag, or this dot state dot operator flag, then we will say that current number is going to plus equal the button name. And then we're going to have to update state again. And I will use the same statement here that we used to update state. So I'm actually going to move it down to the bottom of this function. So just outside of the switch statement. So right now, if I press plus, it should add. And we're not changing the flag, or we're not updating the flag. So we'll be able to continuously make operators, which we don't want it to do. So in addition to adding the operator to our current number, we're going to change the operator flag. And we'll actually make that variable go, go up here so we don't have to declare it multiple times. So let operator flag equal this dot state dot operator flag. So it'll get initialized as whatever it is in the state. And if we put an operator in, as would be the case here, we're going to make the operator flag true. So that it will no longer allow us to put multiple operators. And we'll have to make sure to update in the state down here this dot set state open parentheses open curly braces operator flag so now if we put an operator we cannot even add we can't change the operator but at the very least it's not adding multiple things but what we want to be able to do is that if we pressed more numbers we could press more operators so we're going to have to copy this and we're going to put it down for our numbers that whenever you press a number it'll turn the flag back off. So let's put that here. This is where if we press the number and the number wasn't zero, it's appending a number. So operator flag equals false. And that should be letting us do things like 9 plus 6 plus 5 minus so on and so forth. 
but still we won't be able to change our operator so we're going to need a little more code to deal with that and that's going to be here so after we've checked if the operator flag is on or off and then we've done the thing that lets us add it we're going to check else what we want to do now is delete the previous operator and add our new operator so in order to do that we will need to do some string manipulation so let's make something called new number we can actually make it a const and equals current number dot slice so slice will return a new string from another string and we'll start it the first parameter is a uh, is the index that it starts at so we'll start from the beginning and then the second parameter is where it ends so we want it to be the length of the current number minus one okay uh, cont const good then current number equals new number plus button name and I believe that will let us do not exactly what I wanted maybe it isn't minus one something's amiss all right I'm gonna figure it out hold on it's because I said current number minus one but what I meant is current number dot length minus one so let's save that and see if that changes things great so it's actually doing what we wanted and changing the operators as you click them and then if you click another number you can add more different operators in in a chain here and that is pretty sweet so um, for now that will be it for the operators and we're gonna go on to our clear button because I think it'll help just being able to clear to check things as we go so we will break our case here and we'll have a new case button name strictly equal clear I think this button's name is actually C hold on just a moment button name equals C the ID is clear okay so button name C give it a colon somehow that moved it over a little bit and if this is the case what we will do is just change the current number to zero equals zero and break this case and since we're setting the state for that at the bottom it should work pretty well all right so that's working um, but one thing that we might run into in this case is we press an operator then we clear it now we can't press an operator again or if we do it um, it minuses the the number which would lead to some weird things if we press equals so when we clear it we're also going to set the operator flag to false let's see if that works so nine plus clear plus good so now we get the zero plus like we would want nice 
Now we're going to move right along to the equals button. Case button name equals 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 colon and for this we're going to evaluate the string that is stored in current number. So current number equals eval parentheses current number and I think that should do it. No? Okay, I've typed it wrong. So the button's name is not equals, that's the ID. The button name is the equal symbol. So if we say 5 times 5 equals 25 plus 6 should be 31. We can say 31 divided by 3 plus, oh wait, actually we went minus 9. That should be, I think that's right, 31 divided by 3 minus 9. That's, that's pretty accurate. Okay, very cool. Now, if we want to add, just like before, we want to change the operator flag to be false after we've pressed the equals button so we can add in more different operators without deleting the last button. What I mean is, here if we have it turned off, 6 plus 6 equals 12. Uh, actually, I don't think it would ever matter. Maybe if we hit plus equals, I don't know, it just doesn't do anything. All right, well, that's fine. Then I think we sh we'll st should still turn it off just for consistency. And now we have the equals button. And I think we're good on that. So break. And we're going to make a new case for the decimal button. And for this, we, we're going to need our decimal flag. So we don't uh, let ourselves press the decimal so many times that it keeps making decimals. So up here, we'll add a new property to the state, decimal flag. Start it off as false. And we'll come back down to our case for the decimal. And if not decimal flag, then we can say current number plus equals dot. So let's see, three dot. Oh, if this dot, it doesn't know what decimal flag is because we forgot to say this dot state decimal flag. Huh. Did I call it true? No. So interesting. Oh, oh. It's never changing the flag again. So that's why. So we put the flag in. So then this dot set state decimal flag uh, true. Okay, good. Then we can do things like this, but there's a problem. The problem is well, first of all, if we clear it, we 
the flag is still false, so clearing it should put the flag back to false. So let's copy this and where's the clear? So that's good if we do a decimal and then we clear it, we'll be able to do decimals again. But now we can't do a decimal operator new decimal. So what we'll do is we'll also take this and put it for operators. If an operator is pressed, then we'll allow decimals again. But I only want it if it is a new operator, not um, like changing the operator. So let's put it here after adding new operators. So let's give that a try. 6.2 plus 9.3 point 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 nope good it's not letting us um, let's see if we can do times 9.0 okay equals now can we do an, a decimal no but that's fine because you wouldn't want 89.9 point okay so the des the equals doesn't need to change the flag cool so that is doing the stuff that we need it to. Let's see if the tests work. They do. Okay, very cool. That is all the tests done. So just to kind of recap it, we are using a React application that stores in its state three different things. The number that's displayed on our screen component which is a string. The two different flags that allow us to turn on and off the ability to add operators and decimals. And then we have this handle click function which is part of the application which is being sent as a property all the way down to these buttons and depending on the name that we give the buttons here in the render method of our application that name is going to go to the button the button is going to be clicked the click will trigger this function which is in the button this function will in turn run the function we sent as a property here in, one, in the buttons and it will use this name as a property for that function which is also being sent as a property and it will run the handle click function which is what we spent most of the time building which takes care of our number buttons our number buttons will replace the zero if it is a zero otherwise they will append to the string more, more numbers then if we click an operator button it will append the operator unless there's already an operator in which case it will change it to the most recently clicked one and if we hit clear it will change everything back to zero if we hit equals it uses the eval function on the string current number which is in our state so whatever is written on the screen will get evaluated even if it's a long string of numbers like that. And finally our decimal will only allow us to decimal oh wait that's a bug? What? Well that's interesting because uh, in theory, the decimal should only allow us to decimal if there's not already a decimal in the current number, only resetting when we 
press a button. I wonder if this will give us none or something. Yeah, it doesn't know what to do with that. That's interesting. And that will get all the tests to pass, although it is a little bit buggy. I'm, just, I'm actually just going to figure that out real quick. All right, so now what I've done here is I've just added, I've turned the decimal flag to true if we press equals. Um, but I actually also realized another problem here. So it did fix the problem. So 2 divided by 7 will give you a decimal number. And now you can't add decimals until you once again press an operator. But something else that I realized is 2 divided by 7. You can append numbers on here, which you probably shouldn't be able to do. Uh, like if you press equals, it should be a standalone number. Um, but that is a problem for another day. So tests still work with that fix and we have a working calculator that will work. Yeah, I don't know. I hope you had some success with this tutorial and that it was good explanations. I know I've watched a whole bunch of different tutorials about this as you can see here, um, that's the one we just made, the two different versions of the Medium article. This was a YouTube tutorial, and this was another YouTube tutorial. And each one of them had different ways of doing it. Not all of them use React. Um, this one just used vanilla JavaScript, which is actually pretty interesting. So I definitely suggest checking that one out. And that is pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck in your coding adventures. Goodbye.